so the question that i would like to answer is you know we want to construct something that i'm going to call a control data flow graph right this is essentially a data flow graph right except that the in general this is called a control data flow graph because in this case of course i don't really have any if statements or any conditionals except for the while loop which you know i will not count as an as a conditional because it's just a simple you know an exit condition that's all it doesn't sort of lead to two different branches of execution right but in general what we can construct once we have something of this sort right so you can imagine that this would what this would be a c function okay and what i want to do is to construct a data flow graph out of it okay so the data flow graph what are the things that i would essentially use in order to construct something like this the first thing that i would need to understand is what are my inputs right for one iteration okay what do i mean by an iteration now this is what is happening whatever is inside the while loop executing all of that code constitutes one iteration of this computation okay and the while loop is responsible for basically doing this a certain number of times how many times that is determined by dx and a right so i am finally interested in saying okay let me look at what needs to be done within one iteration and come up with a proper schedule for it right a, a data flow graph and then afterwards a schedule that will execute this either in you know minimum time or in some compact time as you know given by the amount of hardware that is available to me okay so if i say that this is one iteration what are all the inputs that i have for one iteration i basically have all of these values right i have x i have dx the present value of u well c1 is there the present value of y and c2 okay all of these are essentially sort of my inputs to the system right so there is x u dx y c1 and c2 okay all of these need to be given as inputs to that while loop in order to compute one iteration once i have that i can now go ahead and start constructing the operations that need to be performed okay let me start first with the u computation okay and i am going to sort of break it up into stages and say that i need to do u minus something okay so let me do the something part first that is the multiplications first okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to construct something by saying let's do c1 into x right so that's basically this part of it right and i will also do u into dx okay now was this the only possible way of doing it i could also have done it in another way right that is to say i could have done c1 x then uh, sorry i am doing this and then i'll basically multiply follow it by multiplying the two together right so this gives c1 into x into u into dx the other way i could have done it would have been to say i'll do this into u and this into dx right both are correct okay what i mean by this is to say that the way by which i construct the data flow graph given the expression that i have over here is not unique okay so either one of these could have been used in order to construct the data flow graph right what i am going to do is basically just assume that what i am you know i am going to build a data flow graph by assuming that this is the way that i am going to compute c1 into x into u into dx okay 
what else do I need to do? I need to do C2 into Y into DX, right? So let's do that. I'll once again have a multiplication which takes C2 and Y. And then afterwards, it needs to multiply by DX, okay? And once I have done both of these, what do I need to do with this? I need to do the subtraction, okay? Which would basically be a minus, okay? And then what else is remaining? This would be the second subtraction, right? Now, note that this u over here and this u over here going into the multiplication, they are the same, just like the dx going into the multipliers is the same and so on. I'm just drawing it this way for convenience more than anything else. Okay. So, what have I done? This sort of slightly complicated looking tree that I have over here is the entire set of computations needed in order to find ul. Okay. What else do I need to do? I also need to do yl is equal to y plus u into dx, right? So I'll do one u into dx plus y and this gives me yl, right? And finally, the last part that I need to do is x plus dx and I need to do a comparison with a. Is it less than a? Right. This gives me a value of xl but it also gives me the flag which tells me whether or not I need to iterate this thing in the loop. Okay. So what does my actual structure now look like? What I'm saying is all of this finished within one iteration, right? Uh, so I'm drawing this green dashed line over here. And this UL needs to now go back as the new value of U. The YL needs to go back as the new value of Y. And this XL needs to go back as the new value of X. Okay. So whatever are these three values, UL, YL, and XL, need to sort of go back and continue in the next iteration of the loop. Okay. So what have we done over here? We have basically looked at an example where I started off with an equation, went to a code, right? A C code type of uh, something which looks like C code and then said from that C code, this is how I can derive the equivalent data flow graph. Okay. This is the corresponding data flow graph, right? So I've just redrawn it here in a slightly neater manner, right? So that we can use this in order to do the rest of the scheduling that we are interested in. Okay. As you can see, there are six multiplications and five add, subtract, compare type operations. Okay. Now, what do we have over here? We basically know the information that each multiplication takes one time unit and each addition takes one time unit. And if I do the computation of all of that, I'll find that this basically constitutes my critical path, right? So how do I do this? Just like, you know, we were doing the critical path earlier. Now, keep in mind that this entire thing that we have over here, right? This entire thing is a directed acyclic graph, right? Or a DAG, right? And this is pretty much by definition because the entire thing that is doing the iteration, the feedback loop, I have already broken it. I know that the U, Y and X are all going into registers and are going to get reused in the next clock cycle, right? But within this single iteration, there is no sort of feedback loop at all. Okay, so by construction, this is a acyclic graph. And in the case of the acyclic graph, the critical path in this case is four time units, right? Because it is basically through these two multipliers and the two subtraction operations, it comes out to be a total of four time units. 